As developers, we write a lot of bad code. Wait, don't leave. Even if you're working alone, outside of a large team, you have probably experienced forgetting how a certain function works. If so, you're at the right place. A lot of people have reviewed my code, and most have asked me the same thing. How can you make it look so easy? It is mostly a matter of simplifying stuff and making it as easy to understand as possible. Starting off, let's assess something I see everywhere that personally drives me completely insane. Massive if-else chains. Those keywords are extremely helpful, but can be a massive footgun if used incorrectly. Let's go over that. This function is quite straightforward. All it does is determine the role of a user and return it. Despite its limited purpose, it has quite some room for improvement, and you can certainly gain some knowledge to use on production from it. First thing we can do is use something called early return in our code. All that fancy name implies is to take the conditions that immediately return or exit and put them at the start of the function. This way we know for sure that the user has access before even deciding on their permissions. As you see, we just got rid of one nesting layer, but in larger code bases the results are truly amazing. What will make a massive difference, however, is using objects or dictionaries, depending on your language, wherever you can. This way you can avoid the if-else nightmare that you are seeing right now. To do that, we can simply create a new roles object, which mumps the role ID and the actual role name. Next, we just use that object to directly return and no longer need a res variable. Apart from improving code readability, this method makes our code more dynamic. Let's say we need to add two more roles, owner and sysadmin. Adding them to the if-else chain is much harder than effortlessly inserting an element to the roles object. Another possible scenario is that we decide to power this function with a database. By already using objects, that could make our transition much smoother. I generally suggest that you code thing in forward. Always expect that the database layer will be added sometime for the feature you are currently implementing. Future proofing helps massively in every aspect of programming, no matter how much people love to bash on it. However, I have another small trick up my sleeve to show you. Most languages allow for inline if checks. What that means is that we can reduce a single if check from three lines to one line without sacrificing on code readability at all. Note that you should only do this if you're planning on instantly returning or you're calling another function. Now, something that helps me with variable namings. Always imagine that your variable definitions will be read by an 8-year-old kid with minimal programming experience. As people advance in programming, they think that by using acronyms, they somehow become cooler and seem more like they know what they're doing. This often leads to using arbitrary expressions that only create problems later down the line. Apart from avoiding acronyms, I generally suggest using plural when dealing with arrays. Instead of naming an array address array, you can just name it addresses. Avoiding single character variable names. This is something I frequently struggle with myself, but do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Let's say that you're using the ECMAScript function dot map. Something a lot of people, including me, do is numbers.map with a parameter of a, for example. On this simple example, it doesn't quite hurt, but what's generally recommended is concise naming such as num or even number. If you keep this habit, you'll avoid writing code like this. For the record, yes, I wrote that. Something people have carried over from math and physics is using symbols from those subjects. For example, I see plenty of code on the internet that is using t as a reference to time. You might say, it's just time. But what sort of time is it? Does it refer to the current date or time? The time an action took? The moment the action started? The moment the action ended? 
perhaps the time a server connection was established? Jokes aside, it is generally a very good idea to distance yourself from those as they're more of a headache than they're worth. This is my personal way of simplifying potentially complex code. Combining all of those relatively basic tricks together, you can make your production code easier to read and as a result, easier to fix later on. Consider subscribing in case you enjoyed this video. Until the next one, stay safe everyone.